Thanks for leading us, team. Those uh, songs were, yeah, really, really helpful, I think, for us tonight as we just shared communion together and um, an opportunity uh, just, to, just to join together with you guys and worship uh, our great God. So tonight, uh, we're going to be uh, talking uh, around one of the Psalms. So if you have your Bible, uh, you might like to find Psalm. It's fairly easy, uh, if you don't know, in the middle of the Bible. Uh, and uh, I wonder if, uh, just another pop quiz in, if anyone knows how many Psalms there are in the book of Psalms. Anyone know? 150 Psalms, good. Okay, so we're picking one of them. Uh, who knows the longest Psalm? 119, who knows the shortest one? Oh, it's close to 119. Yeah, 117, that's right. It's very short, just a few verses. Um, and the Psalms are broken up into like chunks. And do you, does anyone know how many like books there are? Five, five books. Of the, yeah, very good. Okay, so we're looking at one of the Psalms tonight. Um, the Psalms, are, I don't know, if you look at them, all of them, there's a whole range of different things that we see in the Psalms. Uh, and, and as we know, it's like this pouring out of uh, uh, someone's heart to God. Okay? And so there's Psalms of thanksgiving where you know, the person is praising God for who God is and for his creation and what he's done. Uh, there's wisdom Psalms which observe a lot of just everyday life stuff. Um, which are helpful. Uh, there's psalms that are royal psalms where they talk about maybe the king of uh, Israel or even um, the, the promised king to come, the Messiah. Uh, and there's also other psalms that are, um, they call them Im impeccatory psalms, I think, which is where they're like calling God's judgment on enemies. Um, you know, they're pretty full-on type, um, calling out to God to bring his judgment on uh, the enemies. And then there's penitential psalms, which are psalms that are like, um, you know, pouring out uh, as a response to often sin. And Psalm 51 is a great classic one of this, where David uh, pours out his heart to God, crying uh, on God's mercy and asking for forgiveness. And, and, and so expressing sorrow over sin uh, for the individual. So there's a whole range of different psalms. There's one bracket of psalms that I haven't mentioned yet, and we're going to be looking at one of these tonight, and that is psalms of lament. What does lament mean? I don't know. You could probably Google it and check it out for yourself. But it is, I would imagine lamenting something is about uh, you know, pouring out your heart in sorrow, you know, you're grieving something that has occurred, pouring out heartfelt pain to God. And so we're going to have a look at one of these psalms tonight. And uh, we're going to look, there's a few of them, but we're going to look at a short one tonight uh, to keep it nice and short. We're going to look at Psalm 13. And I thought, you know, maybe we could remember this if you're um, in the grip of grief yourself or maybe you're journeying with someone, you might know someone or something might happen in the future, you might think, wow, you know, 13 often in the eyes of, the, of many people is viewed as an unlucky number. Maybe we could think of, you know, if something unlucky happens or something terrible happens in your life or someone else's life, you can think, ah, Psalm 13, you know, that's an unlucky number, but... It's Psalm 13 helps us, and hopefully tonight as we look at it, it will help us uh, to um, learn how to lament. Because I think, uh, you know, in, in Christian circles and maybe in Aussie culture in general, we have sort of have lost the ability to lament and grieve and be sorrowful. Um, I can remember... Uh, when I was 13, um, sticking with the number, uh, when I was 13, I lost my grandmother. Uh, so it, my grandma was the first, uh, Grandma Lawrence was the first uh, of all of my four grandparents to die. And uh, I can really remember, um, you know, the funeral, uh, all of my cousins gathering together. Uh, you know, it was a significant thing. It was a significant loss for me. And I haven't had deep loss in my life, like I haven't lost a spouse or a child or um, a very close friend or anything like that, but I, I was fairly close to my grandma and I, 
I, I experienced a level of grief, I suppose. I, I, I was sorrowful. Um, and I can remember a well-meaning uh, friend coming to pray with me. And, uh, you know, the prayer... Uh, although they were well-meaning, the prayer it went like this. God, I pray that Dale will not feel sad about losing his grandma. And, like, to be honest, I I didn't hear anything else in that prayer. Like, I switched off, because there was something about that line that just grated against me, that just really, I I don't know, it just made me think, oh, okay. Like, I'm 13, you know, like, I'm wrestling with teenage life and what does life mean and everything, you know, and, and it just made me think, uh, well, am I not allowed to be sad, you know? Am I not allowed to be sad? And it made me really think uh, and question about, you know, is it okay to feel sad? It is, is it not okay to feel sad? Are my feelings of sadness and sorrow meant to be just vaporised in the middle of this prayer that this person prayed? You know, how am I meant to respond um, when, when tragedies happen in life? And so, uh, you know, I think, although you may not uh, have experienced deep grief yourself, uh, you know, there there will come a time in our lives where sorrow is a part of the course. Um, And it might not be that you lose a grandparent, you know, it was for me, but it might look different for you. It might be that uh, the doctor confirms something that you had not been looking forward to. It might also be that um, you'd lose someone close to you. It could be also just even like one step removed, like a a friend might share with you um, trauma that they've been through, uh, you know, deep grief that they've had. And so, you know, we all experience it in different ways. And so I don't think there's any avoiding sorrow and grief in our lives. Uh, it, might, uh, it might be just viewing the news and seeing the constant um, flood of, uh, you know, tragedies that happen and, um, you know, natural disasters and wars that are happening around the world at the moment. You know, that might be it for you. And it, it could even be just waking up in the morning to face another day knowing that the clouds of depression and anxiety are going to be all too real. And I think that as Christians, we have forgotten, and maybe even our culture in Australia in general, we've forgotten how to lament well. And so tonight, as we look at this psalm, uh, I I, I hope that uh, we'll just bring out a few points that will help us to learn how to um, how to l- lament, to be sorrowful, um, because it is a part of life. And so um, this psalm is going to hopefully teach us a little bit. Um, but we see lament in many aspects of the Bible. It's not immune uh, to to people in the Bible. So we see, uh, you know, many books of the Bible um, are, are focused on. Like there is actually a whole book called Lamentations, which is you know uh, just per- pouring out um, uh, the guy's heart. Uh, uh, who was it that wrote Lamentations? Just trying to. Jeremiah, yeah, pouring out his heart to God about what was going to happen and uh, terrible uh, destruction coming for God's people. And so, you know, even Jesus himself um, laments and is sorrowful. Uh, if you remember in the Garden of Eden, before, uh, in, on the, the Garden of Gethsemane, before Jesus is crucified, uh, he's pouring out his heart to God. You know, he is sorrowful and he invites, uh, you know, the disciples in and then he invites, uh, you know, three closer disciples to come and pray with him as he is sorrowful and, uh, sorrowful and as he pours out his heart to God about what is about to take place. So even Jesus himself and even on the cross, he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Like this moment of sorrow and uh, grief and sadness. 
So why don't we open up to Psalm 13, and we're going to have a read, and we're going to uh, see what we can discover. All right. Um, Psalm 13, let's read together. It is a psalm of David uh, to the choir master, a psalm of David. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Just six verses. <laughs> Short little psalm. But here is David pouring out his heart to God. You know, in the raw reality of grief and sorrow. <clears throat> We don't know exactly what's going on here for David. I mean, we could assume he's talking about an enemy there. I'm not sure what that means. It could be the enemy of his own mind. It could be the enemy of, uh, we know that King Saul hunted him down for a time. Could be that. Uh, it could be anything. Uh, it could be uh, an illness or a sickness. We don't know. David doesn't point to that. But uh, something has gripped him with sorrow and grief. And he's responding uh, in this way. And I think that we can learn from this tonight. So, uh, as an activity, uh, or as a, as a way for you all to engage with this, uh, I've got... Um, Keith, would you mind just handing some of them out to everyone? Uh, just an opportunity for you guys to write down uh, a few little points as we look at this passage, um, as we... Um, yeah, just learn from this psalm and that we don't um, just sort of read it and forget about it. But as you um, write down, we're just going to write down a couple of little headings uh, that we can remember from Psalm 13. Uh, and then uh, after we've done that, it's only going to be a few moments, and then I'm gonna, uh, we're going to actually play a little song, which is the words of this psalm to a song. And uh, a lady has done a great uh, rendition of this psalm to a song. And I'm going to just provide an opportunity for us all to just reflect at the end of uh, tonight's message. Uh, and maybe on the back of the page you might like to write your own prayer to God or just to respond or even just to listen um, to the song. So what can we learn from um, Psalm 13? Firstly, there's four things. Firstly... I think that it's really important that we notice that David turns to God. David turns to God. And I think it's really important that the direction of this prayer and lament is really important. It really matters. Because, you know, we can grumble and complain to the people around us. <laughs> and often, if I'm speaking for myself, I tend to gravitate to the people who will, you know, join me in my grumbling and in my complaining. You know, well, I'll tend to gravitate to those people. And uh, we can often just go to those around us and take our complaints and say, you know, look at the situation that I'm in. How terrible is it? Woe is me. You know, and uh, that's, if I'm speaking honestly, that's how I can uh, often respond. Uh, we can go and grumble and complain to those people around us and uh, hope for them to join us in, in my grumbling. But here we see, uh, in, in the very first verse, he addresses not those around him, he addresses God. And David says, How long? O oh Lord, he is crying out to God. He's addressing his lament to God. Uh, do you need more? Um, There's a couple more there if you need. A couple more there, yep. Um, and, 
And so he's addressing God. Uh, some other Psalms, uh, like Psalm 22 and Psalm 88. Um, Psalm 88 says, Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. They are addressing God. And so I think it's important, firstly, that we turn to God. You know, we can often um, turn to ourselves as well, to our own inner dialogue, not only to others, but also to our own self. And we can get caught up in the wallowing in self-pity often. Uh, but we first can learn that we, we can learn firstly from this psalm that we can turn to God and we must turn to God. Uh, secondly, uh, I think that what we can learn from this psalm is that we need to cry out our complaint to God. So yes, we turn to God, but then we also cry out your complaint to God. So we see this in this psalm. David, he firstly turns to God, but then he cries out with his complaint. You know, he doesn't just try to pretend that it's not real. He brings a complaint to God. And I think this is a real important characteristic of a psalm of lament, or as we lament to God. It involves, like, naming the issue. You know, putting, attaching words to what you've been through. You know, if it is a cancer treatment or a terrible news about someone in the family or a, a broken friendship or, a, uh, you know, uh, hearing of someone else's grief, you know, naming that before God, crying out your complaint to God means naming the problem, naming the issue, putting, attaching words to it or feelings that you have about it and uh, expressing that to God. This is exactly what David does. I know, um, you know, it sort of might sound untrusting in a sense that you're complaining to God. You know, who are we to complain to God? Um, but I think that, you know, it doesn't mean that we have uh, uh, no respect for God or that we don't believe in God. I think it actually points uh, to an actual good response. A good response to, uh, to cry out and bring our complaint to God. It's a right thing to do. David cries out to God when he feels that God is absent from his life. He cries out, How long, O oh Lord, will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts day after day and have sorrow in my heart? These types of psalms show us how we are to lament how we are to grieve and be sorrowful. We cry out our complaint with heart-wrenching honesty and genuineness before God because God knows what we're going through. It's okay to, to cry out your complaint to God. Even in the depths of the pit, the loss of a loved one or a moment of despair, God knows our cries. God knows what we're going through and he hears us. So we uh, direct it towards God and we cry out our uh, lament to God. And thirdly, uh, we appeal for God to hear and respond. We appeal to God to hear us and respond. You see, David doesn't just end with a complaint to God. <laughs> he doesn't just bring his complaint to God and leave it there. He actually appeals to God. Now, when I was thinking about this, you know, in a court of law, uh, if someone is brought before the judge and they're found guilty uh, by the judge or the jury and the sentence is given, there is an opportunity for the person uh, to appeal, to appeal and come before the court with an appeal. And often it doesn't just mean, oh, look, I don't agree with the decision. <laughs> That's not really a grounds for appeal. Often the grounds for appeal includes things like, uh, you know, the, the, um, the judge, uh, there, there was something that the process wasn't followed properly, and so I'm appealing against the process that's happened. Uh, or other times an appeal, uh, grounds for an appeal can include things like, uh, like 
uh, misconduct or um, that the prosecutor did something wrong or even that the sentence uh, was not in line with the punishment, uh, you know, with the, the offence uh, that was caused. So if I did something wrong, then and and if the judge or whoever sentenced me for a year, when really I only should have been sentenced for a, a week or something, I, that is grounds for appeal. I can appeal that. Okay, but you've got to have grounds to appeal uh, in a court of law. You can't just appeal and say, "Oh, I don't agree." <laughs> Uh, you've got to have grounds to appeal. And so what is David's grounds for his appeal for God to hear and respond? Well, the grounds that David has for his appeal um, is God's character and God's word and who God is, God's promises. David appeals to God. He says, look on me and answer me, Lord, in verse 3. Lord, my God, look on me and answer me. He's appealing to God and God's nature, God's character, who God is. And he's crying out uh, with his appeal for God to hear and for God to respond. And so we, we can have grounds to appeal uh, with, uh, like what David does. Uh, in Psalm 88, uh, which is another psalm of lament. David cries out there, um, appealing to God who hears, my, may my prayer come before you. Turn and hear and give ear to my cry. You know, this appealing to God, to God's nature and his character to listen and um, hear the lament of the individual. So as we lament, we not only express our difficulties to God, but we call on him to hear us and respond to us in our need, knowing that he alone is our only source of comfort and help. <clears throat> we also know, uh, different to David, we also know that we live post Jesus dying on the cross and being raised to life. And so in that space, you know, we, we know that God has, uh, you know, uh, come and given an answer to his promises in Jesus' death and resurrection. And so we can be grounded on that. Yeah, unlike David, who in the Old Testament was looking forward to that and was uh, hopeful of the Messiah, you know, we live on the other side of that. And we can know for certain that God is true to his promises to rescue us from sin and uh, to give us hope for the future. And so... Uh, we need to remember that as well, that God is faithful, uh, he will save us, uh, has saved us from sin, and he meets us in our deepest, deepest need. And so uh, we can appeal to God to hear and respond. And finally, we see in the last couple of verses of this psalm that, uh, that David confesses his trust in God. So confess your trust uh, in God we see this confession uh, concluding this psalm. God is trustworthy. Doesn't matter what, we don't know the circumstances of this psalm. We don't know what has caused uh, David to be sorrowful and grieving, but he grounds this uh, in conclusion uh, in God's trustworthiness, in his faithfulness, in God's unwavering ability to uh, be faithful and to be trustworthy. He says in verse 5, I trust in your steadfast love. And David brings his psalm to a close, uh, even um, when an immediate resolution is not really, you know, we don't see that it's fully resolved, but David still trusts in God and in his um, unfailing love in his steadfast love. And so, as I look at this psalm, <clears throat> you know, I think back to when I was 13 and when I lost my grandma. And I think, you know, I wonder, I wonder how I would pray for someone who was in that space. Uh, how, how would you pray with someone or for someone or even yourself? We can use Psalm 13 as a model for grieving well, for lamenting, for being sorrowful, 
Uh, it is a part of life and we can do it well. We can do it faithfully and we can do it as God has uh, shown us and how it has been modelled. So I don't know about you, maybe you haven't faced uh, deep grief in your life and maybe you have. It's highly likely that you will at some point uh, face deep grief and uh, I want to encourage us tonight that, uh, you know, Psalm 13 is a, a model, uh, a guide for us, you know, for David who, who poured out his heart uh, in the situation that he was in. We can remember uh, to, to address God, bring it to God. We can, um, we can cry out our complaint to God. That's not a wrong thing to do. And we can appeal to God to hear us and to respond, and we can confess our trust in him. So I'd just like to close the sermon now just by uh, playing um, uh, a song and just giving us all an opportunity to uh, consider, to respond. Maybe you might just do that in your own self. And maybe you might like to close your eyes and just listen to the music and the lyrics, which are the words of Psalm 13. You might like to follow along in your Bible if you like. Or use this opportunity even as uh, a chance to write your own prayer. Maybe, maybe you have experienced deep grief or a terrible situation in your life that, um, that you haven't had the opportunity to be sorrowful about. Maybe you haven't been given an opportunity and our world just sort of says you need to brush it aside and get on with life and move on. I want to encourage you to take this opportunity to, to maybe write your own prayer on the back of that bit of paper. Uh, write your own psalm, expressing, uh, calling out to God, uh, appealing to him to hear and respond and confessing your trust in our great God. So we're going to play this clip. The words will be up on the screen. You can follow along in your Bible. And, uh, and uh, as it finishes, I might just uh, lead us in a prayer.